Good morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the meeting of October 7th, 2015. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item number three is to receive the report of judgments and Lehman Brothers class action settlement proceeds in the amount of $12,611.84. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Item four is uh, approve the payroll for the month. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Item five is to approve the claims docket. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item six is approve the following applications for service retirement. We have five cases. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item seven is to receive the report of death, authorize the payment of $5,000 death benefit, and approve continuation of the pension of the spouse. We have two cases. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight is to receive the report of death, authorize the payment of $5,000 death benefit, and approve continuation of pension to the spouse. We have one case. Number seven? Oh, well, we skipped. We went from number on the agenda, we went from six to eight. Unless I don't know my Roman numerals. Because on my agenda, we go from item six. Six, seven, six. I'm sorry. Let me look. Let me just make sure. Six, seven. Under item seven, you're correct. There are four. Well, okay. I have a motion a second on item seven. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Now on item eight. That's correct. We have received the report of death, authorized the payment of $5,000 death benefit, and approved continuation of the pension to the spouse. We have one case. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine, we have four cases to receive the report of death, authorized payment of $5,000 death benefit, and authorize the secretary to make necessary changes to conform on the following. Yeah. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, one case, approved request of the following to terminate vested rights and commence drawing retirement benefits. Second. A motion a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number 11, uh, we'll take these individually. Um, item A is the agreement for the City of Oklahoma City to provide professional and non-professional services and office rental to the City, the Oklahoma City Employee Retirement System. I have, okay, I'm sorry. I've got one question. I have one question also. Randy, go ahead. I I'm curious on the print shop. It goes from zero to 5,100. Is that change? That was my question also. Last year, they did not submit their information to us when the time the agreement was done, so it was just done as a separate billing item. So it wasn't included in the contract last year. I, I will also say that part of the uh, ERS charges were charged to the personnel department, and that was corrected as well. So last year, we didn't pay for print shop? We did, we did pay. We just paid as an invoice coming in. It wasn't part of, the, of a contract because the they didn't submit their information in time to be a part of the contract. Do we know what the amount was for last fiscal year? It was 
There's 4,200 is based upon how much printing we actually do, and this one is 5,100 is how much printing we actually did for the prior year. So it's based, based on actual usage? Based on actual usage, okay. correct. Okay. Any other questions on that? A motion to second on item A. All in favor? All opposed? Item A passes. Item B is affidavit in agreement of Harlan Fife in regard to retirement benefits owed to Daryl Fife. Um, we've had items like this on the agenda before, correct? Anything we need to know, Wiley? Anything? Not particularly. These are just so small estates that the families don't think it's worth the money to invest in probating the estate, Probate. so it's our way of helping them out. Move the item. It's allowed by law. Right. Okay. We got a motion to second on item B. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item B passes. I, uh, item C is affidavit in agreement of McGarra Owens in regard to retirement benefits owed to Ernest Owens. Same thing. Move the item. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item C passes. Uh, item number 12 is the investment consultant report. Jason, you're up. That's quick. Real quick. Oh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I've handed three items out. You have the quarterly report. Uh, I just handed out the October monthly report, which I want to make sure I get that in your hands because October was a very good month following a very bad uh, quarter. And then finally, we have a, a fee analysis that we just updated. I think that was something that was uh, requested and just wanted to, to get that in front of you, and I'll go through that uh, at the end. Uh, just just starting with with the quarterly report as we as we talked about uh, last month and, and the month before very difficult quarter in the capital markets as we saw uh, pretty significant concerns about slowing growth in China uh, rising dollar uh, putting a, a pretty strong headwind on other currencies falling uh, foreign currencies China devalued their currency number of other emerging market currencies were, uh, devalued during the period, all amongst the uncertainty about what the Fed was going to do with rates. So that had a pretty uh, significant impact uh, on capital markets. At the same time, domestic economy continues to be moving along okay. Jobs numbers look good. I mean, unemployment is at uh, a multi-year uh, low. Uh, you're starting the con consumer. We keep talking about the, the consumer being 70 percent or more of U.S. GDP, consumers being benefited by uh, low unemployment, starting to see some wage growth, as well as low fuel prices, which, which almost act as a, a, as a tax re reduction for the consumer. Uh, that said, markets did not react positively during the quarter. During the month of October, things bounced back pretty, ra pretty dramatically. Again, it's a, it's, uh, as we'll look at some numbers here, this is why you have a long-term view we're not reacting to what's going on in the short term. You have a plan. Uh, it's designed to weather the storm over long periods of time. You have things in your portfolio that are designed to protect in more difficult market environments, long short equity, your treasury exposure within your fixed income managers, as well as just some more conservative uh, equity managers that may be down, but they won't be down as much. Then you also have some things in your portfolio that are designed to provide more uh, positive returns or, or better returns when markets are going up. And you, as, as you've seen, uh, that has been the result. Just uh, not going to go through the, the capital markets piece in, in the quarter report, but I just want to point out how big a difference one month can make. If you turn to page 19 in the quarter, quarter book, a whole bunch of indexes on here. The very top line is the S&P 500. 
uh, if you go down that first column, that's the quarter. And you can see a lot of negative numbers in that, in that quarter. For all equity indexes, we're down uh, for the quarter and down pretty significantly. Small cap being down double digits, international down double digits, emerging markets down almost 20% during the quarter. Fixed income, which is that second section, uh, primarily positive. Most of that is due to declining treasury rates, declining interest rates in, in treasuries, pushing up uh, treasuries and, and higher quality bonds. High quality outperform low quality, so high yield, non-US uh, bonds, emerging market bonds didn't do as well, and you see that in those numbers for high yield down almost 5%. And, um, the, the very last line there, the JPM, EMBI, that's Emerging Market Bond Index. Your Brandywine strategy, uh, when we look at that, it does have quite a bit of emerging market exposure in it, uh, emerging market bond exposure, and that's what hurt during, during the quarter on a relative basis. Much of that due to currency, as those currencies uh, were declining relative to the dollar. If you roll, and then just moving over two columns, and I'll focus on the S&P just to make it easy, but for the one year, the end of September, the S&P 500 was down negative 61 basis points. You roll forward a month, just turn the page, the S&P was up eight, almost 8.5%. Eight that's a year. That's really what our long-term expectations are on, on stocks, 8.5% uh, to 9%. To and that brings the one-year return on the S&P to 5.2. So it's not just that 8.5%. It's taking off another month uh, in the year before, but it can have a pretty big impact, even on three-year three and five year numbers, five year numbers that had uh, about a 1% impact. So that's pretty dramatic. So the, the point of that is it, you, we can't time the markets getting in and out. And a lot of people get nervous when things are going bad and want to get out. By getting out, if you miss this one month, you've just lost 100 basis points per year for five, for five years. That's a big, big difference. So we stick to that plan. Uh, we do. We we look forward in understanding what the what the fundamentals are, but we we primarily want to stick to that plan, the risk budget that you've allocated uh, over the long term to provide a reasonable likelihood of achieving your turn, uh, objectives over time. If you turn to page 22, just looking at uh, results in dollar terms for the year, the the one year period ending 9:30, uh, portfolio began October 2014 with. A little under 650 million. Uh, at the end of September, stood at 626 million. So that was primarily due to uh, operating or spending, 20.4 million in net additions, negative net additions. But that would be your spending for benefits and, and otherwise less money coming in. The return on the portfolio was a negative, just under 2 million. So the return on investment, negative 1.9 million in dollar terms. Uh, we roll forward a month and actually the portfolio was up by close to 25 million in the month of uh, October. So you have 650 million at the end of October. Page 23 looks at objectives versus the primary uh, or, or results versus primary objectives in your policy. Uh, so the, the primary objective over long periods of time is that seven and a half percent absolute return. The last five years portfolios generated 8.4 percent. Uh, relative to a policy index or what the asset allocation would suggest, you've done uh, a little bit better than that as well. The asset allocation or policy index uh, return was 8.1. So that's an indication that your implementation and managers have, have done a little bit better. Uh, from a risk standpoint, uh, volatility lower than the volatility of the policy index, which we would expect from the conservative nature of how your portfolio is implemented. Uh, same with a, a lower beta or lower sensitivity to the direction of the markets and uh, a better downside capture. Ten years, uh, similar story except that absolute hurdle, that 7.5% uh, has been a little harder to, to achieve over this ten-year period ending 930. Uh, and that's really if we looked at the equities uh, and bond markets over that ten-year period, uh, stocks have uh, delivered, U.S. stocks have delivered 6.8% and bonds 4.6%. So if you use that as a, a broad proxy, you're going to come in somewhere around 5.7% over that 10-year period. Currently, asset allocation, page 24, uh, you're pretty much right in line. We've been managing this 
primarily through uh, your cash needs and, and have been taking from small cap as equities have been a little bit overweight, uh, although the markets have brought that down along with uh, raising money from, from small cap. Uh, at the end of uh, October, because equity markets did a little bit better, you're still now at the end of October 1.5% overweight to equity and about 1.5% overweight to fixed income. So uh, we'll need to work with uh, staff on where to raise, raise money, but probably still from small cap for another month or so. Uh, the page 25 shows the EM exposure just on a, on a uh, deeper look through in, into the whole portfolio. Um, you have the, on page 24, where we show the target allocation to emerging market equity of 5% and the actual allocation of 4.25, that's to your emerging market managers, so Wasatch and, and Von Tobel. Doing a little bit deeper look through, we know that your developed market, your international developed market managers, Harding, Lovner, and Lazard, will have some opportunistic exposure to emerging markets, so that's within your equity uh, as well. And then K2, the long short equity manager, is a global mandate, and they may have some exposure. So this is just to provide a look through. So on the equity side, you have about 5.67 of your, on a look through basis in emerging market equity, still within targets and, and ranges. Uh, overall portfolio, 7.7%, and that includes on the fixed income, which we know we're, uh, we're doing that consciously, uh, having some EM exposure within fixed income, and that's coming uh, mainly through Western and Brandywine. Uh, you'll see that on, on the in the middle of that page. Uh, so Western has uh, 4.4 million which equates to 6% of their strategy, and Brandywine, uh, 6.1 million, which equates to 15.3% of their strategy. And if we look at results within fixed income relative to a U.S. investment grade only uh, benchmark, that's really, that emerging market exposure is what hurt during the quarter. But that has been a, a, a bigger positive longer term, and it was a, a positive in the month of uh, October as those currencies rallied. Uh, back relative to the to the dollar. You bet. You bet. Pa page 26 uh, just looks at long term. Uh, we 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 say you're you're getting results ahead of your policy index over longer term with with less risk. Uh, you see it here. Uh, the upper left, while the scale isn't great, this is it's pretty dramatic. There, you want to be to the left and above uh, the policy index, uh, and that. It's hard to tell the colors here, but the lighter blue square is your portfolio, and the crosshairs and the dark blue square is the policy index or the asset allocation. So your total portfolio return, this is going back to January of 2002 when we started measuring, is 6% relative to the policy index of 5.85. You've gotten there with about um, 80 basis points less risk for a sharp ratio or a risk-adjusted return of 0.56 relative to 0.5. So a higher sharp ratio is better. It's telling you, are you getting compensated for the risk you're taking? It's a risk-adjusted return measure. Higher, higher is better. Relative, it needs to be relative to something. Um, from a peer group standpoint, page 27, you see some comparisons. On, on page 27 as well, just to, uh, I think this was, you had seen this last quarter as well, but I uh, just want to explain this. So you see the, uh, in the three months, year to date, one year, and three years, there are five bars. The, light, the first bar is the total portfolio net of fees. We've gone back now, because you don't pay the fees out of your managers, you pay them out of another account. We weren't capturing that, but we have gone back and begun to capture that, so we're reporting net of fees at the total portfolio level going back three years now. Uh, so that light blue bar is net of fees. The dark blue bar is gross of fee returns. The green bar is your policy index. Uh, the yellow or gold bar is a peer group. It is the investor force, which is the vendor. Uh, total funds between 55 and 70% in equity. So these are other 
pension funds, they could be corporate or public pension funds, they could be endowments and foundations that have a asset allocation. I don't want to, it's not exactly like yours, but it, they're long-term liabilities where they have 55 to 70 percent in equities. The last bar is public funds only, public defined benefit plans. So then the, the ranking numbers are your gross of fee returns because these peer groups are gross of fees. So we're, we're comparing your gross of fee return to those two peer groups. So for the one year versus other funds with 55 to 70 percent in equity, you're in the top 30 percentile versus other public funds in the 47th percentile. For three years, those returns are in basically the top quartile for both uh, in both of those peer groups, and same for five years in the top quartile versus both of those peer groups. You see down at the bottom the observations. Those are the number of observations in that universe at this time. The one thing I will say, this is a bit early uh, for the public fund peer group. You see the number of observations is much lower than the, the other one. I'll, it's a smaller subset, but that number will grow and this will look a little bit different. And what I mean it will grow as it's based on when people report their numbers into investor force that the, the peer group grows a bit. I don't anticipate that the, the rankings change that much. Uh, page uh, 28 is just we look at a rolling, rolling one year. I know this isn't your fiscal year, but I think this is also good to, to keep in mind as you we know markets go up and down. This is taking a snapshot look at individual one-year periods ending 930. And more important than the relative returns and the peer group rankings here, I think it's just understanding that you have an eight, eight and a half or seven and a half percent target. Three of the last five years, you've been well over that seven and a half percent. So that builds up. The 2012 one-year period ending 930, 2012, you're up 18.2 percent. One year period ending 9-30-2013 up 12.3 percent. One year period ending 9-30-2014 up almost 11 percent. You're going to have these periods like we have right now where you're, you're not up as much or you're possibly uh, down, but over time uh, those, those add up. Um, finally, just looking at the monthly report, as I mentioned, it's a very good month. Portfolio was up 3.6 percent for the month. Uh, net of fees 3.61. Um, again, on the ASAP, we're also uh, reporting the gross and net of fee numbers at the total fund level. So that top line uh, is gross of fees. The second line on page two of the, the monthly report is net of fees. It goes back three years because that's how far back we, we captured that data. For the managers, just so you're aware of this, in case there is on their pages in the quarterly book, I won't use SSGA because the fee is so low, but if you go to page 40 for Intech, well, first of all, I'm sorry, I'll take you to page 38 just to show what, what's in here for as far as data. And we have a fee analysis that I'll, that I'll go through. Uh, but each manager has a page like this on page 38. So on the upper left is the specifics to, to your account with Intech, uh, what the strategy is, large cap core, whether it's a separate account, a, a mutual fund or commingled fund. So with Intech, you have a separate account, meaning they're buying and selling securities on your behalf, that those securities are held at your custodian, what the benchmark is, and when you performance inception data, when you hired them, essentially. And then your fee structure with them. So that's the stated or your specific fee structure with them. 35 base points on the first 100 million, 30 on the next 100 million, 25 thereafter. You have less than 100 million, so you're at 35 basis points. The page 40, we do show, and we went back three years again with them, their net of fee and gross of fee uh, returns. So it's the same as what we're seeing on the, the total fund level. Uh, the light blue is uh, net of fee, the dark blue is, is gross of fee. We are comparing uh, the peer group rankings are versus gross of fee because peer, the peer groups are gross uh, as well. Um, so as not, 
I guess we are grossing those up. I didn't think so. It's just looking generally like mutual funds. Uh, we currently are grossing up your mutual funds and uh, the the hedge funds, but really what you're seeing reported is, is net of fees. We're we're doing the opposite there, grossing those up to show you what it would be gross. But the the performance returns are generally net in those strategies. Uh, so. Uh, portfolios performing as expected, no, no manager issues uh, at this time, but certainly a much better month than, than the quarter. Uh, quickly, uh, the, the fee analysis that we did, this is something that we, we do update every year. Um, and it's not just the analysis, is that I think, I'm, I feel like this was a couple months ago, I know uh, Diana, you had asked uh, for, for this. We, we do go to all of your managers uh, once a year and ask if you're getting the best available fee for a client with that same size mandate in that with that same type of strategy uh, and from time to time we have found that you may not be and we generally are able to, to negotiate that down uh, so uh, that that has been done uh, this year I don't think there was any where there that were outside of what the, the lowest available fee was this analysis is just uh, an attempt to also uh, show you and benchmark where your fees are coming in relative to peers for this ty these types of strategies. Uh, page three, it's really the first slide in, your, in, in here, uh, is the summary. Essentially, your total weighted management fee is 63 basis points. And I know, there's, what's our fee? Our fee is about 1.5 basis points right now. Uh, our, we don't charge a basis point fee, it's a flat fee, and this year I think it's at 115, it will go to 120 next year. Uh, but that equates to about one and a half basis points. This is simply your asset manager fees, the 63 basis points. Um, and that's weighted, it's based on what you see on slide four. It's, it's a snapshot in time taking the managers stated fee, coming up with what that dollar fee would be on 930, based on 930 market values. And it, the reason why I'm saying that, because it may not tie if you took the actual fees you paid, because you pay your fees quarterly, that those fees aren't gonna tie to, let's say four and a half basis points of the market value as of 930. It's simply come, trying to come up with what the weighted average is at 930. So that's that 63 uh, basis points. Uh, we think that's pretty good. You wanna be somewhere in, in that, I'd say 55 to, to 70 basis point range, depending on the types of strategies uh, that you're doing. From an underlying manager standpoint, all of your managers that we have peer group data for, which is all your long only managers and, and the, the fund to fund managers, it would not include private equity, some of the directs, all but two are below median for the size of mandate and the type of vehicle you're in. So you're paying lower than the 50th percentile. Uh, the only two that fall out of that are Times Square and Brandywine. Uh, Times Square, uh, it, within small cap, a lot of times what happens, you have less ability to go negotiate fees depending on the point of time you enter a manager. Um, small cap managers are capacity constrained. You all selected Times Square when they were at capacity. So the, you were one of the last clients to go in. The ability to negotiate fees lower is a little bit harder at, at that point in time. Uh, but the in, relative to, to peers, they're at 100 basis points. Uh, that's just just below the, the 75th percentile, but they've they've had very good performance. So we know that going in. Um, we still push on them. Can we get it lower? But uh, as long as they're at capacity, there's less room for them to to negotiate. And Brandywine, they're right at uh, there. The the spread is pretty narrow within global bonds. They're at. Uh, 45 basis points. The median is 40. 
uh, for commingled fund and the 75th percentile is 46 so they're kind of right 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 in right in line there uh, the other thing so you'll see on those those subsequent pages where each of the managers lies within the peer group and, and based on the fund the other thing to keep in mind particularly for the international strategies where you're in commingled funds and mutual funds those are expense ratios not just management fees so that also includes custody and clearing and all of the administrative expenses that you would otherwise have outside of the fund that can be pretty pretty costly um, and so those are uh, fairly attractive so we we'd say that the the fees are in line with where where we would expect them to be for the most part you're you're, you're below median with with each of the underlying managers and the overall weighted fee is, is certainly uh, appropriate for a fund of your size Great, great report. Really appreciate uh, how comprehensive it was. One of the questions I had relates to the comparison uh, to the other peer groups. Uh, is there any way where we can determine a level of significance between those differences uh, based on the two distributions of observations? And then we could kind of see. I'm assuming you have the distribution because each one has a number of observations. I'd, I'd be interested to know what the level of significance that comparison is between each of the peer groups. I'm, with the fee analysis? No, sir, the performance. I'm sorry, back to your, uh, specifically on page 28 and 29 of your investment performance review. Okay, the, on 20, so what, uh, just help me out here, what, the difference between the 55 to 70 and the, but I, we can see the averages clearly in the percentiles. What I'd, what I'd kind of like to be interested in is to see some sort of a, um, um, statistical difference like a, like a p-value between the two distributions to see what the level of significance was. Okay. You, you, you can see the difference in the, the percentile returns? Correct. So just looking at the one year, the 55 to 70, the median is 9.79 versus public funds is 9.28. Right. Um, that I think what we would look at is it's really the asset allocation. So looking at within the public funds universe, what is the as median asset allocation? The, the 55 to 70, it's a pretty wide band for equity allocation. So what you're going to see when equities are doing well if you're closer to 70 in equity you're going to look better in that peer group when equities are doing poorly you're going to look better if you're closer to the to the lower end or you're more conservative i'm not sure that an answers your question but um okay i'll visit with you after okay for a minute thank you any other questions for jason thank you thank you sir item number 13 is comments from board, staff, and citizens. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, hearing no other comments, uh, we are adjourned at 1034. Thank you. <laughs>